Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, first ever video review. We exist. We are, we are actually people, you know, we're not just like aliens in jars or anything. <laughs> we're not like brains wired to vocoders or anything like that. To be fair, I mean, we sound like robots and we sound like, this is not a good album, Saint Anger. <laughs> So, <laughs> fucking saying anger. You had to get that in. Oh, I mean, to be fair, we didn't get it in in the last review, so might as well get it in this time. Um, so yeah, we're going to be reviewing the live show of. Or maybe perturbation. Or perturbator. We don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't actually ever said it, I don't think. So Even yeah. last night no one said it, so Yeah, no one talked during the set, so it's sort of like mm -hmm. a couple of fans behind us have perturbator, so I've always thought it was perturbator, even though it should be perturbator, I guess, because it's perturbed. But yeah. Know, it's an amalgamation of words, it's not even a real word. Yeah. I mean perturbation, that is a word. Yeah. But, but perturbed is also a word, so which one is it? Yeah, we don't know. but per perturbator, that's not a word. I mean, I was saying how it sounds like something that you might say whilst you're hung over and just trying to figure out what words are. <laughs> I'm guessing it might be a combination of perturbed along with terminator, maybe? I mean, well, the aesthetic that. would make sense. Yeah, considering all the 80s aspects and also the sound, all that. I've had any references to terminator and it's in the songs. Okay? Yeah. So. I mean, there's one that directly uses, which he played last night. Yeah, uses the, a quote. Yeah. <laughs> From the original Terminator, so... They're mm. yeah, one of the only good ones. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Genesis gives me it, my God. I haven't seen Genesis, so I yeah, can't comment. It's a mess. I, I heard it was better than 3 and 4, but that seems yeah. like a very low bar. Questionable. Mm. When it's questionable compared to those films, yeah. Mm. I'll just stick with the original. To be fair, it was kind of a closed story after the second one. Yeah, it kind of ended in this like, oh, let's make money off it, and then it turned into a mess and just continually got worse. I, think. I mean, how many years after the original was the sec was the third? What? How many years after the second one was the third? It's like a good few years. It was like a decade or something like that. It's like at least like eight or nine years, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or exactly. It's one of those. Why are you? Why are you raising this from the dead? Almost ten years or more after the after the second one was pretty much a closed story. Do you think you could say the same about Jurassic World, Mad Max Fury Road, and numerous other things that came out recently? They've actually been good films, so it doesn't actually matter. I can't comment on Jurassic World. It was not bad actually. I mean, it wasn't as good as the original, but it's certainly better than Turn Pro. Yeah, but that's a low bar again. Yeah, I think it's more towards the quality of the original than it is towards the quality of the sequels. So, yeah. That's false, a bit too much CGI around here, but it's fun, so. Mm. <laughs> so already we're tangenting. Well, we are still talking about films of the right era that is similar to Quantum Rivers and the Sick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, it was quite an interesting experience for me because I've never been to a gig that's sort of synthwave or electronica, anything like that. I've been to club nights that have involved the use of a lot of electronica and whatnot. I've been to industrial metal gigs, but those are very different dynamics to actual synthwave or anything mm. like that. I mean, I've got more experience because I've seen Perfume, I've seen Orbital, I've seen Chemical Brothers, I've seen Massive Attack. We have kind of more electronic sound and massive mm. technical instruments, but anyway. Yeah. But coming across an orbital, especially, are very much the same kind of there's a couple of dudes on a PC and a bunch of riddles. Yeah. So, I mean, the only actual live instruments that were there were for the first support band. Yeah. Uh, Rave Yards. Which is a great name. <laughs> Neither of us actually heard of them before. Yeah. But it's kind of weird. I know quite a few bands in the simply group at the moment. I keep finding new ones, but mm. not one I've heard of. Yeah. It's going. It's quite interesting because it's got a lot of ah. It's a much more blended feel, you know, because it was, it wasn't just um, keyboard work. It was also guitars. Uh, gu was I think it was a bass actually, string bass I think. 
Possibly. And Plus I can tell there's a six string bassist along with a drummer and three keyboardists. Possibly. Possibly. And two of them are doing vocals as well occasionally, but not very often. There were at least two keyboardists. There might I think there was a third one around the other side of the pillar, because yeah. of course, being in the underwater in Camden, it's a tiny venue. Yeah. Yeah, there's pillars everywhere. So yeah. kind of, they had all this tech set out, but because of the way the pillars were, they actually had you know, three keyboards kind of surrounding one pillar. Mm. It was really, it was a bizarre setup. Mm. Also, they kind of have um, kind of sheer screens around the entire thing, which are projecting light effects onto, which is mm. pretty cool. Yeah. It kind of gave sort of very apocalyptic feels, which is kind of appropriate for this sort of music. Mm. I think the venue worked very well for this kind of style as well. It, it looks like the kind of thing you'd see in an 80s film, an underground kind of rave. Mm. It was last uh, minute I've been to it before, but I've been to it before some metal bands. Mm. So. Which is not surprising for Camden. Yeah, it's very heavy on that kind of stuff. Mm. Yeah, first artist were. I don't know what genre to describe the best. It was they sort of, had a hell of a lot of influence from different sources. Yeah, so I think 80s is the easiest way yeah. to describe their genre. But as I, at some moments, I was thinking of kind of post rock style thoughts, from the days of static and stuff like that, and structurally wise, especially. Mm. Other times, I was thinking of New Order or Depeche Mode. Could be something of anathema, which is kind of a bit of a misnomer with everything else. Yeah. Sometimes it was straight up synth wave, kind of 80s style disco music. The bit of it was a massive attack. It's like, what is this genre? I don't know what it is, but it's freaking cool. Mm. I, I really like their music. It's definitely a band I'll be looking into later. Mm. When I haven't heard of, it's like, yeah, it's a new band. I, I mean, whenever I have a gig, at festivals, I'll like, listen to the artist first, see if I want to go and see, because mm. it's a load of choices. The gigs generally, what I'll do is, if I don't know the artist, I'll wait until after the gig. Mm. I go and see them live, and the first impression of them live, which I think, yeah, I quite like this. And hopefully, when they go back to listen to them on studio recordings, they won't sound like crap. Yeah. Because sometimes that happens. Yeah, I mean, I think Vile or Evil. I think Vile, I'm not sure. Um, they're, they're okay live. I mean, the, the last time I saw them live was right after. Um, I'd I'd seen Black Dahlia murder, so that it, the quality, its comparative quality, Evile was far better. <laughs> it was because the bar was driven so low that it's sort of like, oh god, they're actually interesting by comparison. Yeah, yeah. I think the interesting thing about Rave Guards really was. Just it's mostly electronic music created with natural instruments. I mean, a lot of electronic artists don't really do that kind of thing. No. Nah. Massive tracks anyone like a think of. Well, there's a project kind of counts as well. Sometimes. So, they use instruments. I just have to do Pendulum, actually. I yeah. don't know Pendulum. It helps. I've seen them live as well, actually, but they do have a lot of instruments on stage. Yeah. So, it is you know, created with actual instruments live. Yeah. Ironically, Pendulum actually cut for a while turned me off of Electronica because it would be playing all through the night whilst I was in halls. Yeah, I can imagine. So sort of like constantly hearing Pendulum, and it's always that one Pendulum song that everyone knows. I was going to play this, you know, the songs that get radio play are uh, always a problem because it means you hear them forever everywhere. Yeah, and so it kind of turned me off of Pendulum and Electronica music by extension. Mm. With the exception of Frank Lepaki, because that's much more of a... It's more industrial. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, as I mentioned earlier, they've got the kind of sheer screen scan, but they're kind of projecting different effects, kind of water effects, just like blood at one point, there's kind of weird kind of geometric patterns and mm. stuff. Kind of an interesting thing to watch. It's a little weird that one artist that actually had instruments also had the, the, the uh, screens as well. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I will be looking into them in the future. Um, they've got a good show. Mm. So... I didn't say anything particularly, not say anything happened wrong with their set, so yeah, it's nice and varied. So one thing I worry about electronic music is there's only really so much you can do with it. Yeah, it's... but these guys did a good job of mixing up a lot of different styles into one thing. Mm. Yeah, electronic can kind of it can get a bit samey if you're not careful. It's worse with subgenres, mm. like dubstep, for example. Oh god. Is where the kind of bob sounds that you have in most upset sounds exactly the same. They're bad a few or something. Yeah. That's the other reason I can't listen to it very much. I mean, mm. there are a few artists I like in regards to upset, but most of it is just like, uh, it sounds like every other thing I've heard. Mm. There's nothing interesting here. Mm. That's why I don't mind it when you know, some other artists implement 
parts of it, like Lindsay Sterling, for example, or Perfume yeah. Music, the Neo album as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's something else with a couple of dubstep elements, other than just being straight up dubstep. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things like um, Diesel Boy, for example, does a good job of mixing drum and bass with dubstep and other electronica as well. Hmm. You know, all the elements in one thing, and that I like because you know it's actually it's being a bit more um, what's the word? Uh, nuanced. Nuanced both, yeah. I mean, I already used very, don't want to use it again. <laughs> But yeah, graveyards were pretty good. I yeah. recommend checking them out. Um, the the breaks were very quick between the sets. It was sort of like two, three minutes at most. Uh, the first one was a bit longer because I had to take all the screens and everything down. Yeah. It was probably about 15 minutes tops between graveyards and downtown Yeah. But after that, it's a case of, yep, yeah, take one PC off the stage, put another one on, but... Mm. Um, uh, Dan Terminus, his set was a lot of fun, and you could tell that he was really pumped for it. Yeah, he was having a lot of fun. He's been known for you know interacting with the crowd without actually saying anything. It's yeah. strange. Yeah, you, you could see he, he was he kind of had this sort of conductor type vibe going about yeah. him, where he's just sort of directing the crowd and really yeah. amping them up. We're going to have this kind of um, a switchboard thing that you. Of boom is kind of regular thing they use kind of mm. magic effects. That's using a booping it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a really kind of dainty way of doing it is kind of yeah. cute. Yeah. It's a, and it's very quick, sort of. It was almost like he was trying to type something out at times. Yeah, it, was kind of just... <laughs> it really wasn't doing that. We kind of had like, because from what I could tell, kind of the main kind of driving beat was something you know, set up, mm. set up in a loop, but all the kind of extra effects are done manually. Yeah. But as it was, it's trying to you know, get on the build, he was just kind of going to the car and going, yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I realise we're not really going into the songs that were actually played, but uh, the problem is that neither of us, well, neither of us knew Rave Yards at all. at all, and Dan Terminus, neither of us know well enough to be able to pinpoint specific mm. tracks. Yeah, so I've listened to his albums a couple of times, but I can't remember much of the actual individual tracks so I haven't listened to them enough. Mm. So I mean I know he played Rest of Destroyer, which is my favourite it's like it sounded really good live. Mm-hmm. It's cause kind of straight up full speed, heavy as hell. Mm. I mean it's kind of tagline thing is Death by Distortion and they kind of summed it up pretty well. <laughs> a lot of stuff is kind of just drenched in distortion, heavy bass and everything. Yeah. The thing is that that's something I've noticed with when it comes to synthwave artists and electronica and all that sort of thing, the artists that I really like are the ones who actually use distortion in a very particular way, so it sounds like it's an instrument in and of itself. Hmm. Well, you know Dan Terminus and Perturbator, or Perturbator, uh, they're both, you know, known to be metalheads as well, whilst they're great in way. You kind of can see the influence kind of creeping in occasionally. Yeah. It's a lot heavier than a lot of stuff that's out there. I mean, look at something like Dynatron, for example, or Trip or something. It's a lot kind of more relaxed, kind of ambient style. Mm. But with those guys, when they want to go completely balls out, they will do it. Yeah. They kind of think, these people will they sound like, like heavy music. Yeah, it's sort of it's the sort of thing that you can imagine metal bands would easily be able to cover. Mm. I mean, I think there was a festival relatively recently that Perturbator was actually at, but it was other than him, it was essentially just a metal festival. Yeah, he just got added to the set list, and everyone was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Mm. The thing is, you, I, I always feel that you need some variation like that. I mean, when you, I. You've not been to Bloodstock, have you? I haven't, no. Uh, Bloodstock, Bloodstock can get a bit samey with some <laughs> of the bands that they they often pick, you know. You, all metal all the time. Well, the thing is, you can sort of go, okay, so we'll have the thrash, we'll have the black, we'll have the death. It gets a bit tiresome, because I'm very much, uh, I like to have the variations. That's one of the best things about metal, there's so many different song genres, and all of them have their own kind of nuances. Yeah. I mean, even even if there are similarities between folk and pirate metal, you can tell the differences. Mm. 